All right, Shalom. Shalom, Israel. This is the brother Awarba coming back to you again with another lesson. Before I kick it off, I'm going to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raka Kodash. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to uh, you hopeful elect that is out there doing this work in truth and sincerity across the four corners of the planet Earth. And Shalom and salutations. To you, uh, sincere Aquat, that are also subscribed to my channel as well, okay? Shalom. All right. So today's lesson is going to be about um, it's going to be about basically if you um, if you're letting the cares of this world come before you know the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai or the, and the work of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, you know. It's very easy in our daily lives to get distracted by things that, um, you know, that we see week in and week out, day in and day out, you know. Um, but we can't, you know, as learned men, you know, people that are following the will of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, and keeping the man commandments of Him and doing His will to the best of their ability, you know. It, while we're in this flesh, it can be something that can happen, but we can't allow ourselves to get distracted by the things that are in this world okay we're always supposed to keep our eyes single and full of light and keep your how about shimmy how shot first man okay it doesn't matter i mean there's there's times in your life where you may have you know a situation that comes up you may be worried about something or you may be trying to deal with something some type of a situation that you got going on whether it be your health your old lady your children family bills, a job, you know, any type of situation that's basically got you worried or got your mind preoccupied, you know, and keeping you away from, you know, what you're supposed to do, whether it be studying, whether it be doing the work, whether it be, you know, being spiritual in any type, you know, basically trimming yourself and examining yourself, okay? So this is a quick exhortation. And uh, I'm going to bring some scriptures out, and uh, hopefully this lesson is edifying all through the Spirit. All right? So without further ado, let's get to work. <coughs> the first one I want to call is Mark 4, and uh, I'm going to start at verse 1. If you don't know what this is, this is basically the uh, parable of the sower. Okay, so I'm going to begin. This is Mark chapter 4, verse 1, and it says, And he began, uh, and he began again to teach by the seaside. And there was a and was there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea, and that the whole multitude was by the was was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables, and said unto them in in his doctrine. Now this is Yahweh speaking unto the crowd, unto the multitude. Okay, the multitude had gotten so big that he had to actually, you know, push off into the into the sea and get on a boat. So that, you know, he can make room for the people. There were so many people there to listen to him speak, right? Okay, verse 3. And this is in red, so this is Jehovah speaking. It says, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow, and it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground, where it has much earth, and immediately it sprang up, and because it had no depth, of earth but when the sun was up it was scorched and because it had no root it withered away and some fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked it and it yielded no fruit okay so I'm gonna stop right there because verse 7 is gonna be the main point of this entire lesson okay I'm gonna read it again it says some fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked it and it yielded no fruit okay so that's a lot of that's a lot of Jake that's in this truth man okay and that's a, you know you'll see it week in and week out with brothers that are you know <clears throat> really been in this thing taking root been in the truth maybe four or five years one two years you know whatever been here been around long enough but you'll notice that the, the things that they're doing are starting to wane off there's no real production coming from them, or they're not producing or yielding fruit. There's nothing, you know, coming forth from them. 
This person is stagnant, man. Okay? Now, you don't want to be this type of person, you know, where you're so caught up in the world, man, that you let you let the worldly things come up and choke out your fruit, man, and, and blot out your candle. Okay? Because, you know, as the scriptures say, you were bought for you were bought for a price. Okay? The most high chose you for for a reason. Alright? And so if you allow the the things of this world to take you out of you know, take you out of play. How are you going to be fit for the kingdom, man? The kingdom to come. Be so worried about what you got going on. All right? So you have to be mindful to watch out for <coughs> distractions in your daily life that can keep you away from doing the work and the will of the Heavenly Father, man. Because that's your seat. Ultimately, that's your ticket out of here, man. That's your seat on the chariot that you're working for. Okay? And if you're neglecting it by, you know, not doing what you're supposed to, by letting the cares of this world take you out of the, take you out of the game, then you ain't going to make it, man. You know, whether it's your baby mama, whether it's your health, whether it's your, you know, you got, you got all 19,000 different excuses on why you, you know, you're not showing up, why you ain't, you know, coming to camp, why you ain't participating and partaking in the, in the work, man, in the labor, you know. Then maybe this ain't for you. You know? I'm going to keep reading. Alright, this is verse 8. And it says, And others fell on good ground, and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased, and brought forth some thirty, and some sixty, and some a hundred. And that's what we're supposed to be doing, man. Those are the type of fruit that we're supposed to uh, be bringing forth, man. You want to be one of the, the seeds that fell on, fell on the good ground, so you can bring forth abundance increase man okay these are the people that are putting Yahweh by Shem Yahweh shot first man and they life and you can tell that because you know they're not catching a lot of hell or they may be catching hell but they ain't going through damn near nearly as much as you would be going through okay because they have a hedge of protection around them because they're doing what they're supposed to be doing okay you know and I'm not saying that nobody's ever in this truth going, you know, just going to glide through this thing unscathed. Yeah, you're going to you're going to go through stuff. It's part of the trials and the tribulations of being a, a servant, man, and being in the ministry and being a part of this thing. All right. But there is there's a difference <clears throat> with everything. OK. Verse nine. And he said unto them, he that he has an ear, let him hear. And when he was alone, they were about him. With the twelve asked of the, him the parable, and he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of the Most High, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. So for us that are in the know, that is a part of this thing of ours, the Lord gave you the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding for you to know the difference, okay, the things that are coming. For the two-thirds and the rest of the, 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 the nations that are out there, the Gentiles, it's not given unto them, man, Okay. They're not supposed to understand it right out, of the, right out of the gate. But you are. We are. Okay? All through the Spirit. Okay? Verse 12. That seeing that they may see and not perceive, and hearing that they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. And he said unto them, Know ye this parable, and how this will, <clears throat> and how then will ye know all parables? Now we're about to get to the point. Okay? Verse 14, the sower soweth the word, and these are they by the wayside, when the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately, and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Okay, and these are the they likewise which are sown onto stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so <coughs> endure but for a time afterwards when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake immediately they're offended okay and you'll see people like that everybody in a camp has an example of a person like that okay whether they were on the outside of the camp <clears throat> uh looking to cross over and come in you know they come out for a few days or a few weeks or a few months or whatever and they listen for a while they take notes and then next thing you know you know, uh, word gets out on a video, word gets out that they are uh, a part of a cult 
or something like that, you know, for the word's sake, and then, you know, they gone. You don't see them no more. Or their job gets afflicted or, or, or whatever the case may be, man. They start to catch hell for the truth's sake, and they out, you know? But that's not what we're talking about. This is what we're talking about. Okay, verse 18. And these are which they, or well, these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things enter in and choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. Okay? That's the whole point right here. The cares of this world, man. What are you caring? What you catch yourself caring about daily, man? What are you thinking about? Okay? In your downtime. When nobody else is around. What are you thinking about when you land in your bed and you looking up and nobody's awake except for you? Okay? Are you thinking about spiritual things on how to better yourself or your how about shimmy how a shy? How to help the body, how to help yourself, how to be more um <clears throat> more brotherly, you know? Are you thinking about how to be more of a uh, more of a an ambassador for your how about shimmy how a shy? Or are you thinking about niggerism, man? Thinking about worldly things. Thinking about how you're gonna get this bag. Or you thinking about this this fine ass girl you seen walking down the street, man. The other day, how you gonna get at her next time you see her? Or you thinking about some, you know, some dumb stuff, man. Okay? Are you thinking about how you can examine yourself and things that you could cut out? You know, how you can trim your lamps? Okay? How you can cut stuff off, you know, to help you become a better person spiritually? Okay, because believe it or not, man, the things that you do in your spiritual life is going to echo in your in your daily life and also in, in the physical plane, too, man. Okay? That's what this thing is all about, man. You got you to gotta really examine what you, why you're doing this thing, why you're in this fight, man. Okay? Because, yeah, I mean, in the flesh, we're all going to get worried about... You know, the cares of things because we do have families, we do have jobs, we do have, you know, things that are outside of the truth, outside of the brotherhood, outside of the work. Okay? But at the end of the day, you cannot, you cannot let these things come in and choke out your light. Okay? Got another quick precept and then I'm gonna end with it like this. This is Luke 12. Okay. <clears throat> and this is actually talking about the rich man. Okay, because there's a lot of us out there that's just like, hey, man, I got to get this work. I got to get this money. You find Jake working two and three jobs, man. Two and three jobs are for two and three people. You know, as my grandfather told me. And I never understood why he said that until I actually came into this knowledge, man. Okay, because if you put the most high first, you seek ye the kingdom first and everything else going to be added unto you, which is in the same it's in the same chapter. But let's get to the point. Let's get these scriptures. Okay. This is Luke 12. <clears throat> and uh, verse, I'm going to start at 15. Okay. And he said unto them, take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, this will I do. I will put down my barns and I, I will pull down my barns and I will build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, thou has much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink and be merry. Yeah, so. A lot of you Jakes, man, you'll take your foot off the gas once you got the bag, man. You got a couple couple grand packed up in your savings account or whatever the case may be, and you think you're good, right? That's why the Most High doesn't give a whole lot of Jake, man, uh, uh, riches, man. Give you more than you need because Jake will take his foot off the gas and want to take a fucking vacation and be gone for six months to a year. You won't hear nothing about him, Okay. Jake will destroy themselves, man, because they'll feel like they got they got money. They can go out and just, you know, get whatever the world gives them and they'll forget the most high. OK, proven fact. All right. It's verse 19 says, and I will say, uh, well, actually, Slack, we're going to go to verse 20. But the most high said unto him, thou fool. Oh, battery's dropping. Thou fool. 
this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So the Lord said, hey, look, you got to come sit by me, man. Took it, took him, took him just like that. <coughs> took his life. Verse 21. So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God, towards the most high. Same thing, man. Exactly the point. If you caring about everything that's going on here and you trying to build up treasures here and not storing up your treasures in heaven, then, I mean, this vanity, it's all vain. What is it going to profit you to gain the world and lose your soul, man? Okay. Verse 22. And he said unto his disciples, therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What ye shall eat, neither for the body, what ye shall put on. Okay, the life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have store, house, nor barn, and the most high feeded them, how much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you uh, and which of you with with taking though thought can add to his statute one cubit? <clears throat> Basically, man, going into this, man, the more the, the Lord knows what you're going to need, man. The Lord knows what you need even before you ask him. OK, and so many of us get caught up in this world that we forget to study. We forget to pray, man. We forget to fast. OK, we forget the, the, the true things that we need in order to communicate with the most high, man. With the heavenly father. OK. From not being in the spirit, man. Too busy worrying about different shit. Okay, so what if you catch in hell, man? Your car break down or, or, or your baby mama puts you on child support or, or whatever, man. So what? Shit happens, man. You're supposed to get afflicted, man. All right? But you have the heavenly father there that you can cast your burdens upon, man. Okay? Yeah, you got ailments, man. Yeah, your back hurt. My back hurt. Everybody else's back hurt, man. Everybody else got to go to work too, man. You know? But what are you doing to keep this word coming out? What are you doing to trim your lamps, man? What are you doing? Have you examined yourself and seen where you could where you could make something better? Okay? You got to think about these things, man. <clears throat> I'm gonna drop down to verse 29. Okay, seek ye not out, seek ye, slack ye, and seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink. Neither be ye of a doubtful mind. A lot of us have a doubtful mind, man. We worry about just the, just the whole point of worry, man. Word, just the worry is a doubt. That's being doubtful. Okay. For all these things, verse 30, for all these things do the nations of the world seek after. And your father knoweth what you have need of these, when you have need of these things. Oh, it's like I had it, right? And your father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But here you go, right here. Verse 31, and this is the point, I'm going to end with this. But rather, seek ye the kingdom of the Most High, and all these things shall be added unto you. Okay? I'm going to read it again. But rather you seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Okay? So, not the cares of the world, not your woman, not your job, <clears throat> not your family. Okay? Not your situation you're going through. Okay? None of that shit, man. None of that matters. What matters first is the Most High, man. The Most High in His Son, and His work, and His ministry. Okay, so with that, I hope this lesson has been edifying. I'm going to give uh, all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakah Kodash. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful and humble elect. Until next time, Shalom.